Blessings in Jesus, dear friends. My name is James Jacob Prash. If you're watching this, you probably know that from Oriel Ministries. Um, something I wasn't going to bother to respond to because we get very little correspondence or communication about it, very few emails or any kind of contact. But I have been asked by one or two people to make a brief response to something that I've already reacted to in the past, and I don't really see much of a need to react to it again. One, because it's already been done, and two, because there doesn't seem to be a lot of people who take interest in it. But we do have new people joining us all the time on Moriel, on RTN, on Dean Gibson, on various formats that we, we appear on. And there was a concern that perhaps some new people may have encountered something that would leave them in a state of confusion requiring clarification. That hasn't happened, but I'll just deal with it as briefly as possible. A number of years ago, about 25 to 30 years ago, 25 years ago, certainly, I did a teaching on the area of Messianic apologetics and Jewish evangelism. Messianic apologetics and Jewish evangelism. My family are Jewish. My wife and children are, are, are Israeli. I myself am not Jewish, but my wife and children are, and my father's family is of, of Jewish descent. We are Israeli. I speak Hebrew, and I did, in addition to my science background, theology, and I have a background in academic Judaism. I speak Hebrew and so forth. Uh, so I have that kind of a background. Um, but I came from a science background. I didn't really study theology or Judaism until I was older and saved for some years. As a young believer, though, I was trained in Jewish evangelism by different organizations and ministries, predominantly, initially, Jews for Jesus in New York before I immigrated to Israel. Uh, and one book I read, and I still have copies of, is a book I obtained in Jerusalem from the Annette's Publishing House. It's published by Annette's. Uh, they work under different names, but it's the Messianic Jewish Publishing House in Jerusalem, and the book is called The Great Mystery, The Great Mystery, and it's written by Rabbi Tzvi Nasi. Rabbi Tzvi Nasi, whose other name, his pen name was Herschel Prince, taught Hebrew at Oxford University in Britain. He was a rabbi who taught Hebrew at Oxford University in Great Britain, in Oxbridge, and he became a believer in Jesus. And he wrote this book that summarized the messianic apologetic teaching about the angel of the Lord, Hamalak Adonai, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, who in Judaism, I mean Talmudic Judaism now, is known as the Metatron, the Metatron. The Metatron can be translated the one who's on back of the throne, or by some Greek reckonings, technically it could be center of the throne, but he's the Metatron. The angel of the Lord is what the rabbis call um, the Metatron, or the Metatron is the name that rabbinic Judaism gives to the angel of the Lord. Now, it is the view of many believers, probably most believers who've studied it, certainly my own view, that the angel of the Lord is a Christophany. It is the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, appearing in the Old Testament. He wrestled with Jacob at the book of Peniel, at the book of Jabbok at Peniel. He appeared to the parents of, 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 of Samson. He went before the armies of Israel on the book of Numbers. The angel of the Lord, with a definite article, is an Old Testament <clears throat> enfleshment of Jesus, or what the rabbis call, or the one the rabbis have named Metatron for fear of confusing him with Jesus. Be that as it may, there is much, much mention of him in rabbinic literature, much, much mention of him in rabbinic literature. And they ascribe to him divine properties as being the creative agent of God, the salvific or the salvation instrument of God, and also uh, the third pillar of the Godhead. Incredible things it says about the angel of the Lord, who they call the Metatron, the Metatron, who, but whom I maintain is the Lord Jesus, as have evangelists to the Jews 
for many, many centuries. And I would recommend this book written by um, Rabbi Tzvi Nasi from Oxford University, The Great Mystery, Can Three Be One? It's uh, quite a book published by Yanetz, Y-A-N-E-T-Z or Y-A-N-E-T-Z. In Jerusalem, I think you can probably get it online if you're interested in the subject of how to explain to an Orthodox Jew that God is one God in three persons, the triunity of the Godhead. This is a book I would well recommend reading. It is, again, The Great Mystery, How Can Three Be One? Uh, incredible book for its day. And it was also used when it was first published. We're talking in the last century now. It was used against oneness people, against Sibelians, people who denied one God in three persons. So it had another function as well, but it was initially used in evangelization of Orthodox Jews. And I did my first teaching on that quite some time ago. It's not a new teaching. It's not at all a new teaching. I simply did it on a recording so people could give it to Orthodox Jews for the purposes of evangelizing them. That's all. It was done for purely evangelistic reasons, messianic apologetics. Dr. Eitan Barr, who's the principal of the Israeli College of the Bible and the One for Israel ministry, uh, says this concerning the Metatron in their curriculum and on their website. You can go, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, you can go to One for Israel and see what is taught to Israeli pastors and evangelists in the Israel College of the Bible concerning the angel of the Lord. And Dr. Barr points out the following. He, he cites Professor Idol, who is the head of the Department of Jewish Thought at Hebrew University, who says that the, the Metatron has divine properties in his being. And it goes on describing him and it's interesting enough that whoever reads the New Testament will discover that Jesus the Messiah is defined in the exact same way as the rabbis define the Metatron. I believe that the one the rabbis call the Metatron is the Lord Jesus. It's a Christophany, an Old Testament manifestation of Christ. That is all I've ever said. That is all I've ever taught. And it is what's taught in the Israeli College of the Bible uh, this article was written by its principal, Dr. Eitan Bar, well-known figure in Israel. Uh, another was where I first encountered this subject was from the Jews for Jesus organization, originally in Great Britain, now in the United States. And you can get this on the Jews for Jesus website, also on the Jews for Jesus website. It's called Kabbalah's Best kept secret. Kabbalah is mystical Judaism. Now, on my teaching, I warned, I reiterated the warning every time I addressed this subject, that Kabbalah comes from Babylonian Gnosticism. It is mysticism and it is a cult. Like many things, it may have elements of truth in it, but it is mystical Judaism. It is not scriptural, it is dangerous, and some of it is flatly demonic. It's a cult. I warn against Kabbalah. Nonetheless, the rabbis have taken the angel of the Lord, who I know, I believe, to be Jesus, and they call him the Metatron, and they have given various rabbinic and Kabbalistic interpretations of him. Some of these were, are that he is an angelic being. Others are that he is Enoch, from the book of Enoch, from the book of Genesis. I maintain that the rabbis are wrong, that the rabbinic literature and the Kabbalistic literature are wrong. He's not Enoch. He's not an angelic being. It's the Lord Jesus. The angel of the Lord is the Lord Jesus. But I'm reading here from the Jews for Jesus training manual, essentially as it, as it is used in apologetics. This is incorporated into, into the training they do for their own evangelists. And it quotes... Uh, Professor Yehuda Liebs from the Department of Jewish Thought at Hebrew University. He, he's a well-known, very well-known figure. It traces references to Yeshua in traditional Jewish liturgy to Jewish believers in Jesus in the first century. 
It goes back to the first century. Believing Jews in the first century church identified the angel of the Lord, the one the rabbis came to call the Metatron, with Jesus, or said it was Jesus. In the first century, this went on. It also goes on to quote in the Jews for Jesus article, Daniel Abrams of Bar Alan University in Israel writes of Liebes' observation, Yehuda Liebes has brought to our attention the striking identification of Metatron with Jesus in the liturgy, with Jesus in the liturgy. Now you can, again, go to the One for Israel website, the Jews for Jesus website, the Yanets website. What I've taught is simply mainstream messianic apologetics used in evangelizing Orthodox Jews, showing that the concept of a triune God is not alien to Judaism, but it's found in Judaism. I disagree, of course, that the Metatron is not God. I believe he is God, but their own literature says he has some kind of a hybrid of God and man, and that he's the third pillar of the Godhead. It actually states this. Again, the book is incredible and well worth reading, The Great Mystery. But I don't agree with what Kabbalah says about it or what the rabbis say about it. I just think that the angel of the Lord is Jesus, a Christophany, as has been believed since the first century, according to a number of Jewish academics, people with no Christian prejudice, have said that this was believed by Jewish Christians in the first century. From bar University, we're talking about people from, from Hebrew University, people from Oxford University, no jokes. Serious academics of scholarly renown had said this. I simply say the same thing, that the Metatron, as they call him, is actually Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. I've never presented another gospel, another doctrine of Christ, another anything. I have disagreed with what they said about the Metatron being purely angelic or being Enoch, I've stated that Kabbalah is a cult, and, and, and much of it demonically influenced for sure. I've warned people about it, but for the sake of apologetics, I entered into this disputation with rabbis. I've done it many times. That's what I was trained to do as a young believer. That's what Jews for Jesus does. It's what Israel College of the Bible does. It's what Messianic theologians have always done. This goes back to the first century. Please access the websites and read the material for yourselves. There is someone who has a sinister motivation, who has again taken up a cause or a, a vendetta against me for, for certain reasons. And he's taken material, others have said, falsely accusing me of teaching Kabbalah, something that I flatly warn against because of what I teach about the Metatron, on a recording whose purpose is to witness to Orthodox Jews and ultra-Orthodox Jews. That's all. That's its purpose. I wasn't using it to teach Christian dogma. I was using it for evangelistic purposes, essentially. That was the only reason I did it. Only reason I have a motive to do it, I taught nothing new, nothing that was not being taught by Jewish evangelists for many generations and many centuries, if the academics are right, going back to the first century. But I've been lied against, and the person who lied is someone who has lied about me and about other things many times. I don't want to have to rehash all of this. I'll go into it very, very briefly. There was a person named David Nathan who, although his family, he's the opposite of me, although his family are not Jewish, halakhically or Jewish, he grew up Orthodox Jewish and he became by profession a believer. Unfortunately, I don't say a born-again believer. He was into teaching the word faith thing that you can pray God's power into a jacket and knock people over for healing with the Benny Hinn type thing, which we didn't know about. 
He got into teaching that the gospel is not eternal, even though the book of Revelation says it's an everlasting gospel, and that the blood of animals can take away sin and will do in the millennium. Perhaps more seriously, he said, God the Father is not the creator. Well, our ministry had to get rid of him. We completely got rid of him, and we put out a warning about what he was teaching, and we made some apology for ever having given him a platform. His ministry has largely fizzled in Britain, uh, Australia, North America, and even South Africa. He had an organization called Bread of Life near Johannesburg, which he's left and gone to a more remote area of that country. He is not really in circulation much more, at least not at the present time, but he created quite a bit of fanfare at the time with these teachings that God the Father is not the creator and so forth. He became the poster boy or the intended poster boy for GV247, the internet TV arm of Studio Scotland run by Deborah, Deborah and Stuart Menelaus, or Stuart and Deborah Menelaus in Fife in Scotland, and they were promoting him and pushing him. And they took grave exception with me and with our ministry, Moriel, for warning people that he was teaching heresy. And they began trying to get churches to ban us and all of this. Now, there's a lot more to it than this. She's had her own churches banning her for her own wrong teaching. That was Deborah Menlaws. But I'm speaking just now about what Stuart Menlaws has been saying about me. Uh, they, they reacted against this. I wanted an amicable departure from them. I worked with them at one time on the production of a film called The Daniel Project and a sequel to it when they used footage of me with my agreement called The Daniel Connection. I was told at that time, I was told at that time that this film was being done for the Lord as an evangelistic project. And although the secular actors and voice artists and so forth on it were being paid, I agreed to do it gratis, not to accept any money, because I believed it was for the Lord and for evangelism, and that's why I did it, as did other believers, thinking that it was being done for the Lord. I don't have a problem with people selling these things, but what I do have a problem is when you say it's for the Lord and for a ministry and you sell it to Hollywood and then it gets sold to communist China effectively to prevent it from being translated into Mandarin so it will not be used for evangelism during this time of persecution of Christians in China. Let me show you what I mean and what I objected to. I felt that this was wrong. I wanted to participate in this film project because I wanted people to be saved. Here's what was done with it after I did it for nothing. This is from the Studio Scotland website, if you are able to read it. The Daniel Project documentary was acquired by the distributor OWU for digital rights. The Daniel Project in regard to global territories. Okay. The internationally renowned Sandrew Metronome has signed a contract with California Pictures, which is a branch of Paramount in Hollywood. The Daniel Connection, more news to follow. Why was something that was done, I was told, for Jesus, that I did without any payment, even though the secular talent was paid, because I believed it was for Jesus and to see souls saved, what is going on here? That's what I wanted to know. Well, let's see what else happened. Film rights sold. Once again, Studio Scotland, the film rights are sold. If you can't see it, I'll read it to you, but I assure you, I'm reading it verbatim. 
Journeyman Pictures owns the rights to the following film, The Daniel Project. California Pictures owns the rights for the following film, and any breach of copyright is treated seriously. Studio Scotland owns the rights and sold it to these other companies. Okay, let's see what happens next. California Pictures. This is, again, the Daniel Connection. California Pictures at Paramount Studios in Los Angeles have just announced that the Daniel Connection has been sold to China in 2018, February 27th, all rights. I did it for Jesus. I was happy to do it without pay or remuneration for Jesus, for evangelism, for the gospel. But I was not happy to do it for Hollywood. I didn't care that they paid the secular talent. I don't care about that But when they get Christians, not only me, but other volunteers, to do it gratis, being told it's for the Lord, and we see what it is. Now, their company, Studio Scotland, is not a registered charity, as Moriel is or anything like this. It, 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 it's a secular business. That doesn't bother me in itself. But don't get me to do something for the Lord and for the gospel and sell it to the world. And then they have the audacity to denounce me as a false teacher. Well, let's go further. Why, if I am a false teacher, as they claim, because of my polemic on behalf of the angel of the Lord being Christ, whom the Orthodox Jews call Metatron, if that makes me a false teacher, as Stuart Menlaws falsely asserts, why are they selling videos of me and making money from videos that feature me? If I'm a false teacher, they shouldn't be selling videos of me and making money on it. And they should certainly pay me if they're going to do it. Now, I've made it clear, I don't want the money for myself. I will give every penny of it to an organization, a ministry I support that helps persecuted believers in Muslim countries. Every penny will go to a ministry that helps believers in Muslim countries, and I will publicly, pu publicly publish the receipts. If the unsaved people got paid, why didn't I? And why didn't the other Christians? No, I don't want the money for myself. I was happy to do it free as long as it was for the Lord, but not for the world. That's just wrong. I wanted to pull away from these people. I couldn't work with them anymore. They were pushing, promoting the ministry of a heretic, a heretic, and denied he was a heretic. It became so terrible that Stuart Menlaws and Deborah Menlaws took a film that was filmed in the church of Bill Randall's, Pastor Bill Randall's in Iowa, in the United States, and edited it. They edited it to make it seem like initially Bill Randall's and myself agreed with David Nathan's false teaching. Of course, Bill Randall's didn't agree, and neither did I. But it was an edited tape. He actually edited a film reel, edited the video, and posted it on the internet to mislead people. Openly, openly, how else are you going to put it? It's a lie. I never endorsed that teaching. I opposed it. And while I speak only for myself, I did it Bill Randall's. It was an edited film. The people who were there saw what really was. How do you account for this kind of dishonesty? Well, he got this Metatron stuff from some of the people he aligns himself with against me in his vendetta because I opposed his promotion of David Nathan and because I wouldn't work with him anymore. I just came to the conviction that the men laws were running a business pretending it was a ministry. 
getting Christians to do things gratis, free, telling them it was for the Lord, but they were really running a business. They were always concerned with contracts and copyrights. One of the places they got this from, or the main place, was from something called Pirate Radio in the United States, run by Chris and Joshua Rosebro. Joshua Rosebro is the producer. Chris Rosebro is the narrator. Let me show you their blog. This is from recent months. This is not old. I can't read all of it. It is too disturbing. Here are their photos. Joshua Rosebro. Eric July. Go F yourself. Here's another one. Now, that's my kind of effing party. Then they've got lewd images of women and things like this, and a lot of excretorial or fecal vulgarity. I don't want to say it. Just filthy, trashy language. And the F word, the F word. Joshua Rosenberg, you don't know Jack... Use your imagination. What does this kind of vulgarity, and, 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 and using the F word, and what does that have to do with a Christian ministry, Christian radio? But there's a lot more that can be said about the Rosebros. Chris Rosebro is a catechetical Lutheran. He believes that salvation or forgiveness for sins comes by confessing them to him, Catholic style. A catechetical Lutheran is somebody who's half Protestant and half Roman Catholic. He believes in sacramental forgiveness of sins by confessing the sin to him. He prays in front of a statue of an uncrucified Jesus. He says there's no Antichrist, there's no mark of the beast, there's no apostasy that the Great Tribulation has been going on for 2,000 years that the millennium has been going on for 2,000 years. The book of Revelation is only symbolic. Don't worry about the Antichrist. There is none, no literal Antichrist, no mark of the beast. It's, these are his teachings. And they've been praying in front of statues and all this rest of it. Well, he, he teaches error. He believes false things. But the four-letter vulgarity... Now, we know the scandals. Joshua Rosebro, his wife left him, alleging that he is a homosexual, and when he infected her with STDs that were homosexually contracted at the time the U.S. Navy ordered him off of a submarine, that he, she, she wouldn't live with him, and then he then divorced her. And he went off with another and so forth. People who left, left their ministry, their church, and said that he's a homosexual or bisexual, I don't know. And I don't care. I really don't care. But why would the Menelaws, why would Stuart and Deborah Menelaws resort to someone like that? Go F yourself. This is my kind of F and you F and... And more. This is disturbing. There's something wrong with the men laws. Something wrong morally, something wrong doctrinally, and something wrong spiritually. They'll get in bed with a heretic. They'll get in bed with a perv. They'll get in bed with anybody. It looks like it's just business. Well, I don't want to go on too much. Here's another one of their friends. They went to an organization that was called Catalyst. Catalyst. Catalyst is a rather controversial organization that's in Great Britain. And, again, it also is rather disturbing for several reasons. Catalyst. Catalyst. This is what it says on their website. C-A-T. A-L-Y-S-T in the UK, is a charity, they say, that has been helping individuals who've been damaged by abusive relationships 
and religious groups since 1995. Now listen, this is where the men of laws went to get an ally against myself and Moriel. Catalyst has no religious or political position and offers help to all, whatever their religion, race, sexuality, or gender. They go to an organization that has no position concerning faith or belief in God. They worked, they, they were recently involved with them, some kind of scandal with Hindus, Muslims, Mormons, anything or anybody. They don't care. They have no beliefs themselves. They're not a Christian organization. They say we have no religious position. We'll work with anybody of any religion, they say, including the men laws. And of any sexual orientation. Homosexuals, lesbians, bisexuals, transgender, anything. It's all okay with them. While they claim to be a charity, they request payment or contribution of 50 British pounds of about 68 US dollars per hour at the present rate of exchange for telephone counseling. You pay them $68 an hour for telephone counseling. They don't care if you are homosexual, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, Muslim, Hindu, or Mormon. This is who the men laws got in bed with, actively on the internet. There's something wrong with Studio Scotland. I just wanted to get away from it. I couldn't work with it anymore for ethical reasons. And when they began promoting a heretic, I had to get away. David Nathan is a heretic. Even many people who were friends of hers admitted it and tried to warn the men laws that he was. Not that that's my business. But when you post a video that you've edited, that's lying. This catalyst organization made outrageous claims that they publicized on the internet. They said that I and Moriel were under investigation. I've never been investigated in any jurisdiction, neither has Moriel. We're a registered charity in the UK. We are a <coughs> tax deductible corporation in the United States, nonprofit. We've never been edited. We've never been I'm sorry, we've never been audited, we've never been investigated. It's a lie. Moriel, Jacob Prash, under investigation. The men laws have lied to the Christian public. They say that I profit or profited from the sale of recorded material. Anybody in their right mind can go onto the Moriel website and download all, all of our recorded material free of charge. <clears throat> and our site is not monetized. How can I profit from something that we give away? Second line. They said we're a cult, and this catalyst organization they're partnered with said a cult is an organization that abuses its membership. What membership? Moriel has no membership. We have no members. Lie, lie, and lie. Edited video, lie again. He said he's never heard David Nathan say anything remotely approaching heresy. What about God the Father is not the creator? What about that animals can take away sin with their blood? What about that the gospel's not eternal? And then to be partners with, with vulgarity, vulgarity, with unbelief? Well, I was asked to respond, so I did. That's the truth. I can say more, but there's no need. I assure you, 
Stuart Menlaws is not an honorable man. I've worked with him and I had to get away from him for that reason. His wife, the same. These are not honorable people. They're not truthful people. I don't believe they have a ministry. I believe they have a business. Now, I wouldn't care if they sold those tapes or those videos. I wouldn't care. But to sell it to Hollywood and to ask Christians, not only myself, but to ask me to do it free while you pay the secular talent and then try to brand me as a false teacher when you promoted a false teacher, a heretic, you're calling me one on a false pretense while at the same time continuing to sell videos of me. This is beyond hypocritical. It's beyond ridiculous. If I was what they say, why are they selling recordings of me? Why are they marketing videos of me? But if they're going to do it, why don't they at least give me my royalties so I can donate them to charity? I don't want their money, but I'm entitled to it. No, I didn't want to address this. I saw very little need. If anyone wants to go to the Jews for Jesus website, to the Moriel website, they want to go to the One for Israel website, to the Yanets website, to read the academic opinions, the professors from Oxford, from Bar-Ilan University, from Hebrew University, I assure you, I've only said about the Metatron what Messianic apologists to the Orthodox Jews and what evangelists to the Jews have always said, according to the academics going all the way back to the first century. That is the truth. I'm sorry to interrupt your day with this nonsense. I was asked to do it. So I did. God bless and thank you so much for listening.